Good evening and welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to talk about the atomic line spectra. Now you may have seen many uh, pictures of the atomic line spectra and I'll put one on to the actual video about now where you see this very pretty sort of rainbow spectra and this is actually the ones that you get from the sun and we can actually use these to work out, or any star, to work out what elements are inside. And the reason we can learn uh, about the elements inside is actually to do with um, uh, basically energy levels and understanding the idea of emission, photon emission. So here is a diagram. This is an energy level diagram of an element. And I have labelled the uh, transitions that can happen in this element. So it's got very succinct energy levels that have certain values. This means that photons when, when are emitted at certain values of energy. So here, <laughs> sorry, um, this photon here is emitted at 8.6 mega electron volts and we can work out that wavelength. <laughs> sorry. So E equals hf so first of all i've got to get that into joules so 8.6 times um, 10 to the 6 times by the charge of an electron that equals 1.376 times 10 to the minus 12 joules that is the energy of this photon. So let's find out the frequency. Equals Planck's constant, which is 6.63, sorry, times 10 to the minus 34 times the frequency. So my frequency would equal this number divided by this number. which would be 2.1 times 10 to the 21 hertz. Which, if I use C equals F lambda, would have a wavelength of 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 2.1 times 10 to the 21 of 140. 5 times 10 to the well 1.45 times 10 to the minus 13 meters so this photon that is emitted here that is its wavelength and I can actually find these in a lab and each one of these corresponding arrows will have their own wavelength and each corresponding element has their own unique ones too so in a lab I am able to create basically a spectra of the colours that an element would absorb. Because of each of the individual jumps. So I might have a couple of lines here. I might have one here. And I might have a very large band. Let's see if I can find a red pen. Unfortunately I can't, I'll do it in black down here. Of them at the bottom. This is the emission spectra. And for each and every single element, it is unique. Because each and every single element has its own unique set of energy levels. These blue wavelengths will be made by the biggest jumps. So blue and beyond, so going to UV, going to gamma. This way, we made by the lower, the lowest jumps. So the smaller the gap, the less energy there is, the redder the wave. Now how does this relate to absorption spectra? Basically, an absorption spectra is what I'm about to show you now. 
it is the spectra with those black lines missing. And that is because what's happening is that in the center of the sun or a star where the light is being made, it is passing through the corona. And each individual element are absorbing the specific energy levels to do this. So if hydrogen's there, it will, it, it will absorb the energy for the levels for their electrons to jump. And the light that's leaving this star would be missing some specific bands of energy. And that is what receives our end on Earth. So that's what we see. The photons will be emitted much later, but there are, uh, compared to the brightness, the initial energy release compared to these photons that we release, we would see the initial energy release. We see this mass amount of energy uh, come to us and it will have some energy levels missing. We are able to then work out the composition of different stars by these atomic line spectra. And it gets much later into astrophysics where you can actually use to start classifying stars by how much of certain elements they have in it.